What's going on? Hey, look, it's Thursday night. You know where I'm at. I'm right here live. Actually, last Thursday I was going to go live, but unfortunately we kept on losing power and stuff like that because there was a big storm here and I actually had a, a little bit of a touchdown here and there from like a tornado up the road from me. It broke my tree in half, so my tree got broken in half. And it knocked a basketball court, uh, go over onto my car, knocked my mirror off. And then I was like, okay, I can still do my life. But the power was flickering on and off until they replaced some power lines. So, like, I was, I was definitely ready to go live. It just didn't happen. Definitely. Jordan, what's going on, Jordan? What's up, Twisted? How have you been, Jordan? Bro, you know you know how to come see me every once in a while. I know you had to come through Springfield in a while, like sometime. You still got my number, bro. Like, use it, man. Come see me. Saying to you, Gene, what's going on, Gene? Gene Scott in the building, Mister Sparky himself. Let's go, Gene. Nick, what's going on, Nick? Hey, man, how's life treating you? Miss the lives every Thursday. Yeah, I'm trying to get back into the rhythm. Um, Like I said, last week I was trying to get here. I was trying to get here. I was like, I'm going to do it. And then, like, boom, tornado. Like, we're taking cover in the basement. Broke half my tree. Ripped my car's mirror off. Like, dang, bro. <laughs> like, it's been, it's been something else. But yeah, it's been crazy. Uh, Sam says, "I saw you at the plaza today. That's what's up, bro. That's what's up. You could you could have came and said what's up, or maybe you did. I see so many people each day, but hey, I chose a great place. Uh, yo, I got some good news from for the bearded wonder. What's that, man? What's the good news? Let's hear some good news. I always like some good news." Let's hear it. T3 Trucking, what's up, Twisted? Just passed my CDL test yesterday with Wilson. Start my 25K tomorrow. Let's go, bro. Let's go. Let's go. Everybody give it up for T3 Trucking. Give it up. Look at this. Peg Legs in the house. What's up, Peg Leg? How have you been? Yo, buddy, what's going on, man? I'm living the dream. I tested out, I tested out two guys in the last two days, one a day, and got two people their CDL. So let's go. I tested out a guy today, trifecta. He's gonna be an awesome driver, awesome driving, awesome at backing. Like the dude's gonna be a beast. Both of those guys are gonna be a beast. They get with the right trainer, and let's go with the heart me on TikTok. So I'm on live on TikTok and YouTube today back and forth and sir with the h just gave me a heart me let's go uh jordan says i'll be in springfield saturday for the ace two class if you're going to be around uh saturday i should be i am i'm going to be in town um hit me up we'll try to find find something to do because um i should be able to do something bro uh, U11 Uprising says, what does truck, how does trucking work in Europe? I do not know how trucking works in U Europe. I'm not from Europe. I'm sure it's probably the same as here. You get a load, you go pick it up and you take it to the place and you deliver it. But opinion of AI self-driving trucks, we are not there yet. We are not at the point where we're ready for AI self-driving trucks yet. I don't believe i believe that it's coming in the future but i i, I tr honestly truly believe we're probably like i would say 20 years out from that happening but we will be one of the first like not not prime as a company but truck drivers are going to be the first ones probably affected by ai taking their jobs really like in a mass quali quantity because once they get them down, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people are going to be switching to them. So there's that. Gene Scott, it's so sad, but I don't 
Don't work for Prime anymore. Long story. Gene, what? Oh, you're going to have to call me, man. I want to hear about this. You don't work for Prime no more? Yeah, you're going to have to call me about that, Gene. That's, that makes me sad, Gene. You know, so Gene, Gene's been one of my followers for a long time. He was one of my referrals whenever he came in. Um, Tennessee, Tennessee trained him and got him a CDL. And like, you know, we talked back and forth all the time. Like we, we kept in touch. We were t in touch a lot till like here recently. But, you know, I was, I really, really wanted to see him succeed. So we, I was like, dude, it makes me proud when you're doing good. Like he, he went through some stuff with a TNT trainer. Like I talked him through that. We got a, he, he got a new TNT trainer that taught him a lot and he learned a whole lot more, but you know, we, I was like, man, you're one of my success stories, bro. But still, I'm hoping that you're still using your CDL, at least throw in the chat. If you're still, still using the CDL, bro. Let's go. Nick says, I haul horses now since leaving Prime, but come through Springfield a lot. Maybe one day meet you at Fire and Ice. Hey, maybe so, bro. Like, that would be cool. I would I would like that, Nick. Nick, you've been following me for a long time. You've been following me since the days I was in Pittston, or be maybe even before that. Jaden P says, I was at Prime for PSD, and my trainer was terrible. Oh. Wow. Well, you know, it happens. It happens. Did you go through chain of command and stuff like that and, you know, let somebody know or did you just up and quit? Because sometimes you let somebody know, like, what's going on. I will tell you that. So uh, I got my manual restriction removed on the class thanks to your training. Let's go. Got the manual restriction removed. Hey, how hard was that to get it removed? Because I'm I'm hearing all kinds of stuff, state to state. I know it's going to change, but what is like? What are you like? What are what kind of hoops are you going to have to jump through to do that? I guess is what I'm asking. This light over here was blinding me, so I'm moving it back some. I hope you can still see me. I just moved it back some. So, but, uh, let me know how, like, kind of how, what the process was you had to go through and stuff like that, bro. Like, you don't have to do it on here. You can send me a text or something, but I would really like to know, uh, uprising says, how does vacation times PTO work for truckers? Um, pretty much if, if you're lease or if you own a truck, you're really not going to have any paid time off like that. So you're going to have. You're going to have, um, what's it called? You're going to have like, you're, if you're, ha if your truck's paid off, then you're just not going to have to like any cost for that time that you're off. Now, if you're lease, you're going to have to pay your truck payment still while you're off. So there's like no real pay time off. Now, if you're a company driver for Prime, the as a company driver, then after you drive so many miles, they will give you like like a seven days worth of pay for for x amount of miles you drive. And I can't. I think it's like I think it's every 100k miles you drive, something like that. I can't remember the exact number. Don't quote me on that. But um, I'm pretty sure that it was like 100k. So that's kind of how it works if you're a company driver and then you're allowed to take off um, seven days or, you know, however much vacation time you have. Or I have, I think I have two weeks saved up because I never used it. Like I just leave it on there. It's kind of a rainy day fun. Uh, you're losing weight. Twisted, you look great. Man, dude, I wish I was losing weight. I actually gained some weight, but uh, thank you, bro. <laughs> like, I need a I need to start stop drinking those energy drinks. That's what I need to do. <laughs> Brian, what's going on? Uh just finishing up one PSD phase. Great program and trainers. Hey, I appreciate that, man. We got a lot of great people out here. Great, great trainers. 
you know we try to give you the every everything we have to get you through this program so prime is real good and they're real understanding and they help people out i've been gone since february oh family stuff well gene you got family comes first family does come first so man go take care of the family gene Hey, brother, if you need anything, man, definitely hit me up. You got my number. And for anyone that doesn't know, my number is in the description on a lot of my videos. I'm not sure if it's in this live. I hope it is. But a lot of y'all have my phone numbers and stuff like that from stuff. Uh, I'm not spe speak on that, brother, man. Sorry. Let's see, Hans with a $10 super chat. Let's go. <laughs> Twisted D pajama fun. So, hey, I got $10 for my pajama fun. Like, let's go with some new PJs. Look at this. Custom made? What? Custom made jersey? Let's go. That was a weird sound. What was that? Hans, I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Hans has been following me for a long, long time, too. Uh, Cole says, what's the process of going through a waste station, and what are you the consequences if you skip one? If you skip one, they're going to pull you over. They're going to bring you back in. They're going to give you a ticket for every sign. Okay, not all the time they will do this, but they're, they can give you a ticket for each sign you pass, one by one by one by one. And then they're going to go through your truck with a fine tooth comb, more than likely, for skipping it. And they're going to find everything that's wrong with it. If you got two lights out, that could be two separate tickets. Hopefully they write it on one, but they can write you one ticket for each thing they find wrong. They're going to go through your logs. They're going to do a big time inspection. The process of going through it is if the green light's on or it's open, go in there. Follow the directions. Some have signs, some have lights, some have an intercom. You know, whatever the case may be, some does one axle at a time, some does the whole entire truck and trailer. Follow the directions that y'all have in there. Most of the time, it's just coming in there. They're going to check your weights, and then they're going to say drive on. So if you get called for an inspection, then you have to go in and bring your paperwork, bring your logbook, your load stuff, and bring your ID in the building. Richard says, hey, Twisted started an orientation in Springfield on Monday. Let's go, Richard. Welcome in. Welcome in. I'm proud of you, man. Hardest part is that, that Greyhound ride. Trucking along with Kiersey. What's going on, Kiersey? How have you been? I haven't heard from you in a while. Like, I was thinking about you earlier today, and I was it, the pad was so hectic. But I was like, I'm going to pull over right here. After I stop, I'm going to call Kiersey. And then they're all like, hey, we got to move all these cones because we're redoing the pad. And like, and then they're blocking the, Like, It's just been a mess out there this week because they've been doing a repaving and, or they're sealing the pad and repainting it. So it's been fun. But, hey, it's great to see you, Kiersey. Uh, Coast in California. Cali, they have to have those agricultural stations. What's the process for that? Questions for everyone. It's kind of the same as a weight scale. A lot of times they want to see our paperwork right there, but it, it, it's the same kind of rules as the scales and stuff. Or they want to know what you're bringing in there, stuff like that. You know, some some stuff they want to check. You know, it's just different stuff like that. So same kind of same concept. Uh, Sim says, your 2024 pre-trip engine fuel area trailer and coupling. Hashtag Prime Inc. Help me. Thanks a lot. Hey, you're welcome. You're welcome. I'm trying to get, I need to redo the pre-trip video again. I want to do it in the Prime way because a lot of people have been like, you like I did it my way. Like, hey, I don't want to say a Brage and Bulgers or Cuts. I just want to say everything's probably not secure, not cracked, been or broken. It means the same thing as a Brage and Bulgers or Cuts. So like my pre-trip was like, hey, that's that holds probably not secure, no, not cracked, been or broken. And people are like, oh, you're messed up this preacher. No, I haven't. All my students, I, I don't think I had one person fail this new pre trip yet. And I'm trying to keep that going. Uh, inspection stations. Greenwich, what's going on, Greenwich? I think uh, 
I'm going to try to get with Greenwich tomorrow, buddy. I'm going to get with you tomorrow, try and make some dinner plans for us. I got a load, but as soon as I get back, maybe we'll go out to dinner or something, brother. I haven't seen Greenwich in a while either. I, well, I saw him two days ago for a brief second, but it would be nice to sit down and have some dinner together, bro. Uh, Gene Scott says, I'm driving. I'm a company. Now I get home a lot more and I don't go into the negative. My dad is not doing good and I'm only I'm the only kid. And yeah, bro, you gotta take care of your dad, man. I feel I feel you, bro. You text me? Good, good. Uh has freight got better lately? Uh honestly, I don't think so. I've been talking to a lot of people and they were kind of like freight's not getting much better. It's election year, honestly. It's election year. So, I, and I told people this from the first slow the first time it slowed down. People were all like, "Hey, Twisted, when do you think it's gonna get better?" I'm all like, "After the elections, probably the year after the elections, like mid of the year, maybe the second quarter, maybe the end of the first quarter, something like that. That's when it's gonna pick back up." You think about it, every election year is jacked up. All election years I've been here, it's been jacked up. So, you know, it is what it is. Go ahead and throw away the hand. Uh, oh, it's 125K miles for vacation. So I was a little bit off there. I, I, I was giving it away 25,000 miles early. So thank you, Kiersey. I appreciate you always. Uh, Nick says, Twisted, do you have a... Any number anyone can text. I actually delivered two horses at Rob Lowe's estate a couple weeks ago. His wine cellar is insane. Yeah, it's it's inside a cave, bro. It's inside a cave. Yeah, um, text me on the number in the description. It might not be in this video. It's probably on some of the other ones, but you can always text me on that number. I'm better to be reached by text. I do a lot better with text. I am socially awkward like when people come up to talk to me i'm always like awkward i'm like hey how you doing um thank you for watching my videos uh uh uh, uh. so like i'm an awkward person talking on the phone to uh, random people is kind of like intense for me and stressful so you know it it's happens it happens is anybody upgrading soon no i haven't heard of anyone upgrading soon i haven't even had it I haven't had an upgrade bonus and I don't know when TNT is taking time. It's time. Are you a company driver or a lease driver? I am a company driver. What's that in the background? Where at? I got a lot of stuff in the background. That's my logo. That's a, in case of fire run sign. That's a grim reaper. That is our paintball team. That's a lunchbox from Killer Clowns Outer Space. That is a 51 Logistics hat. That is two hats I gave away with Gizmo in the middle. And that's Shaggy 2 Dope. That's Violent J. That's a cup from DriveWise. DriveWise gave me that cup. Um, that's my sign. That's a red light. That's a Texas flag. That's a little toy truck. Can't really see that right there but that's a candle and that's two fake wrestling belts <laughs> and that is one of those pee jugs that that pee jug right there has got me my first video that ever had a million views and it was on the tiktok so you know i went i went back and bought it because i was like you know what it got me a lot of views i'm gonna go back and buy it so Yo, Faye boy, what's going on? How's it going? What's good? Uh, T3, is it possible to fail the new pre-trip? You get a dang checklist. Well, I don't use, I tell my students not to use the checklist. I really do. If they offer it, I'm like, hey, tell them you don't want a checklist. I think the checklist is more confusing than anything else because you learn it in you learn it in the order I'm giving it to you. It's gonna be easier. The checklist is not in the order that I get that I've taught you. So I tell my guys not to even use the checklist. We don't use checklists on my truck. <laughs> I mean, they can if they want, but I really highly suggest not doing it. 
Uh, Coast says, have you invited that trucking with Josh guy on panel? No. Who is trucking with Josh? I don't even know who trucking with Josh is. Sorry. Do we still have the Discord? No, nope. Discord was a train wreck. Discord was a train wreck. It wasn't worth my time. It was stressing me out. I've been going through a lot. Like, I was in a bad place for a couple months, like a real bad place in my mind. And um, I was not doing good for a while, but I'm better now. And Discord was one of the things that was, like, horrible horrible for me like it, it, was, it was a bad experience it's something that you got to be on a lot you got to check in a lot i had it, it was to me it was kind of horrible and the original the original goal of it and what i originally set it out for was to help people and it it just turned into like where in my opinion a bunch of people just wanted to hang out and they didn't want it to help people they didn't want to help people and then it just it doesn't exist no more. How about that? It doesn't exist. Trucker Josh vlogs. He rebat Brandon. I don't know who that is. I know uh, there was a Jacob vlogs I used to watch that I still talk to. He was my trainer. Backwoods in a little bit. Bro, we never got together to go out to eat. Dang, I feel bad. When are y'all coming back to town? I feel horrible. We were supposed to go out to eat. Uh, SP March 17th says, how does politics of it, trucking business? Dude, everything, a lot of stuff revolves around uh, politics. The oil field revolves around politics. The price of your fuel evolves around politics. There's a lot of stuff that is involved in there. I'm not, I'm not saying that like I'm not gonna be like one side or the other on here. Like I'm not gonna tell you none of that stuff. But it always, it's always affected by that. Uh, Sam, it's a family thing at Prime Inc. Everybody, positive shout to, shout to my trainer, and the whole Prime and you twisted D. Let's go. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. I'm happy for you, man. Uh, uh, Nick says, Carnival or Carnage? I'm from Detroit, so Insane Clown, Clown Posse means a lot to me. Hey, me too, man. I'm not from Detroit, but, you know, hey, I'm going to a concert pretty soon, right here in Springfield even. Uh, Muhammad says, I got, got a question. I just passed my CDL and they said I get 250 for passing on my first try. So when do I get it? My trainer went home and says he does not want to pay me while I'm waiting on him. First off, Muhammad, congratulations for passing your test. Second off is some people say it's, it's the same day that they took their test. Some people say it's that Friday that they took the test. And then I've had some people tell me it's on their first check. So honestly, I don't have the correct answer for you. I know that it's not going to be two weeks out or something like that, but it should be pretty soon. I don't have the like exact time. Because I've had I've heard a lot of different things about the bonus. Are there package handlers at Prime? Uh, we have a mail room, if that's what you're asking. I don't know what you're asking, package handlers. Hans, lives have been snowy for you. Yeah, bro, isn't it supposed to snow again up there in that area? I think it's supposed to snow pretty soon again up there, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, snow snow sucks. <laughs> I'm glad we haven't had that bad of a winter, really. Honestly, like I've been happy it hasn't been that bad of a winter. Uh, SP March says, "Do you like I-69? Will help white traffic on I-35." 
I don't even. I don't even know. To tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah, what Pegleg said. Pegleg spoke facts. <laughs> Prime Trainer Tim, glad to see you tonight. What's going on, brother man? How have you been? Bro, I, it was so good to see you the like a week ago. Maybe it was two weeks ago. Whenever you came by, man, it was so good to see you, dude. It really was. It was so good to see you. Backwood says, I'll be around back around the fourth or so for a little bit to test out. Let's go. Have y'all been having fun? Well, I'm sure when you get to town, you're going to be telling me some stories, man. Like, hey, this happened. She's good at this. She beat me. She beat me up this one day. You know, she she said she, she said, hey, I'm the boss. You're not the boss. No, I'm playing. I'm playing. Like if I was training my wife, it would be hard. I'm telling you, like, I don't know if I could train my wife. So like it would be really hard for me to train my wife. I'm pretty sure. Because, you know, you see, you want you want your wife to succeed. Hold on. Hold on. Let's go. Let's go, Hans, with the pajama fund again. Five dollars for the pajama fund. Now I can get a pair of pajamas for fifteen dollars. Let's go. <laughs> All right, but uh, yeah, dude, training your wife has to be hard because, like, where you normally would get onto one of your students and be like, "Hey, what are you doing, bro?" Like, you're all like, "Honey, it's okay." Um. We'll just try it again next time. But, you know, with with a, somebody that's not related to you or not your friend, you're going to be like, hey, bro, what are you doing, man? I, like, I just done told you about that. So it, it's different. It's just different. I don't know how to really explain it, but it has to be hard training your wife or a family member. I trained a friend. I trained two friends, and that was kind of difficult. But, hey, we got through it. We did it. We did it. Brandon Wood says, hey, Twisted, thank you for the videos. I'm really dragging my feet looking for another computer programming job. Your videos inspire me to get out and see the country. Let's go, Brandon Wood. Let's go, man. You coming out. So you are you were into computer programming, and now you're like, hey, man, I'm going to come out here and drive. That's what I'm talking about. That's That's great, man. Congratulations. You know, it's with like computer programming and the IT stuff. I get a lot of guys, they, they're they like, man, it's hard to get a job in that field because you have to know somebody. You have to know somebody in that field to get a job in there. So, you know, I probably feel you. I can kind of see your struggles, man. Uh, Brandon Woods has been out for a week with my PSD trainer, heading back to Salt Lake City to get tested out for my CDL tomorrow. Everyone I've met with Prime have been awesome. Awesome, bro. Like, hey man, we're all we're all wishing you luck tomorrow. So definitely, hey, after your test, shoot me a text or comment on one of my videos. Let me know that you got it, bro. That's what I'm talking about. Congratulations. You got this, man. Just word of advice, try to go in there calm. You want to be calm. It's like when you're driving out there, whenever you start getting all excited or nervous or scared, your heart starts pumping, your blood's going, your adrenaline's going, you make mistakes. Try to calm yourself down and breathe and you'll be fine. Uh, he says, what do I got to know or do to get my CDL? All right, Lee. Um, you can either go take your permit test first, or you can just go and apply at primeinc.com and they're going to send you a go get your permit. So it's that easy. As long as you don't have a bad criminal background record or like you and you have job history and a driver's license for two years or three years, whatever they require now, uh, you should be fine. So, I mean, it's not hard to do. Uh, Greenwich Trucking says, ran a video 
ran a video of you training your wife. That would be fun for us. <laughs> oh, let's go. Uh, Peg Lake says, <laughs> damn it. Uh, Peg Lake says, what did Captain Morgan eat for Captain Crunch of, okay. Backwoods says, yeah, she's driving now and been doing pretty much all the backing at shippers and receivers and has her pre-trip down. So I think she's going to get it the first time. Let's go. And she, she was super nice. She was super nice. And she looked like she was very confident and she knew, Hey, this is what I want to do. Like she didn't seem like she was down on it one bit. And like, you were very confident too. When, whenever I met you, you were very confident and both of y'all are very nice people. It was an honor to meet both of y'all. Uh, Faye Boy says, how did... Was in training. How did Google do who was training with me? Google, Google. I remember, I remember that, but I don't remember who it was. Dang, I... I remember saying that. I remember. I re I know what you're talking about. I just don't remember who it was. But I'm pretty sure that they got a CDL and they're on their way driving somewhere. Um, let's go with the new videos coming out. Let's go backwoods having new videos coming out pretty soon. That's what I like to hear. Any news about the a new yard? They're still looking into um they're still looking into building one in Georgia. So hopefully we get one in Georgia, another drop yard. Where I've always said we needed a drop yard is like Abilene or not Abilene, Amarillo or somewhere maybe New Mexico area. Some Amarillo would be the best spot because you have all those meat plants and stuff like that in that area. They could uh, drop the Loaded trailers at the drop yard, like you could get somebody to do, just take them to the drop yard, and that way, if you had something with extra time on it going to California, you could drop it there. And then, whoever's coming from California with a load with too much time on it, they could drop it at that drop yard and then grab something that needs to go to California and take it back with them. You know, I think that that would have been a good area, but I don't get paid to make those decisions, so let's go. <laughs> So I, I'm not sure on when they're going to build another yard or not. And and the rumors, like them talking about building another Eco Shred, because Eco Shred is doing amazing. Uh, Gene Scott, everyone has a, have a great night. Got to make a drop early in the morning in Wisconsin, then heading back to Texas to take, take it easy, twist the big D, Green Witch, and Peg Leg. Hey, good night. Good night, Gene. Take care of yourself, man. Be safe out there. This laws. I know you remember Google. I do remember, man, but I, you know, I just can't picture them right now, but I do remember. I do. I do remember. Later, Gene. But yeah, every, everything's going good. They're redoing the pad right now, which has been kind of a inconvenience because where we're normally testing, you know, it's been kind of jacked up here and there. So a lot of things have been kind of not so hot this week because everyone trying to get out there for training and stuff like that. They had a wait on the pads. Like today I wanted to go do some backing with my students, but guess what? The pads was shut down and the pad ended up getting shut down till like later on today sometime. I think it's opening back up tonight, but I or it opened back up already. So hopefully they got it all painted. And next time I'm out there, I can do some major work with my students. You know, it's it sucks, but the pad has to be repaved and resealed and all that stuff. You know, it has to get done or it's just gonna deteriorate. So you know, it is what it is. We work around it and Hey, everything got done that needed to get done. So I had a guy test out there and then a lot of people tested out there with the 
the pad being all that stuff going on out there and people had to drive out of there. It's it's definitely different. It's definitely different. He likes telling his jokes in the chat. Uh, Andrew says, hey, how do you like your new students? Are they doing good? Yeah, they're doing good. Um, they're doing good. I, one of them I just barely got today, but I let him drive for a little while, and he was he was picking up turns pretty quick. He was listening and following directions. So, you know, he was picking up his turns and doing them like he was learning pretty fast. So, you know, that's always great when you got a quick learner like that. My other guy, he's um he's doing all right. He has he has a bunch of stuff that we got to get worked out, but he's getting he's getting there. Uh, Hans has got to head got to go head into Nebraska for some loose potato loads. Hey Hans, be safe out there, man. I know that there's still winter out there, so just be safe out there. It's good to hear from you again. Always a pleasure to hear from you. Jordan says, got to ask about doing training. I'm not sure about it. Well, what do you think? It depends. It depends. What are you thinking about doing? Like... Are you lease? Are you lease? Well, you haven't been here long enough to do PSD, so you know you're definitely talking about TNT training. We need TNT trainers because, like, there's a little bit of a wait right now between PSD and TNT. So there's a little bit of a wait. So we do need TNT trainers. And Jordan, you would be awesome at training. You would be awesome at training, but. You know, with the way that they changed the pay and everything, I don't know if I would even do it. You know, with the way that they changed the pay for the students and all that stuff and how much you have to pay. And right now, freight kind of being slow. In my opinion, my opinion, I would I wouldn't do TNT. Like if I was lease, if I was company, that's another story. I'd be like, hey, give me a TNT student. Let's run. You know, if I'm company and I, I didn't have my time to do the PSD part, then for sure I would grab a TNT student. I mean, it's more re revenue and it's more pay. Like, let's go. The lease side, while f freight is kind of down right now, I don't, to me, I kind of really don't see how much I would profit from it. And I know that Prime would not want me saying that, probably, but it's the truth. Like, I don't think that there's much profit in it, in the TNT right now on the lease side. I've heard of some lease trainers saying that they're still doing great, but you know, I want if I'm if I'm sharing my space with somebody, I got to think about I got to weigh out my my options here. How much is the TNT going to pay me? How much am I going to make? versus having my extra room is the money enough to give up my extra room i don't know now whenever freight's running i'm sure it's going to be enough like whenever it's it's running good like freight is up 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 and we're just flying loads out yeah yeah freight's going to be good money's going to be great for sure So, you know, it is what it is. I mean, some people, some people might be able to make it out there running TNT on the lease side right now, you know, more power to them, but I got to like, I got to get really paid to be doing TNT for reals. What? Look at Hans right here with a super chat. Hans with a $5 super chat for Red Bull fun. Let's go. Energy drinks on Hans in the morning. Let's go. But I don't know. It would be a hard decision, Jordan. I know you would be an excellent TNT trainer, and I would I would put any of my students with you and know that like they're in good hands. Like I completely trust you. But 
I just don't know. I, I would say try it out. Try it out. See how it works. And if it's not working good, then don't take another one and just wait for wait for freight to pick up and then try give it another try. That's all I can say. You know, uh, freight skater showed it best one time. You think I'm getting rich doing TNT training? He he shared all of his numbers and everything. He was all like, look, yeah, I'm doing this. Like, I'm, this ain't making me rich. You know, he's he pretty much said, like, he's not getting rich from doing it, but his heart is in it. He wants to give somebody a great start. And, you know, that's nice and everything. You know, it's it is what it is. Maybe give it a try. If you like it, go for it. If you don't like it, then, hey, don't do it. Andrew says, that's always good. Uh, your pad is bad. Your pad is bad. Bat. I don't know what you're saying. Oh, your pad is better than yours in Salt Lake City right now. I'm not big on um, Salt Lake City. Gene Scott says, one quick thing. They really need to overhaul the training for TNT. That's why y'all are so short on trainers. That too, you know, 50K miles is kind of a lot to be stuck with somebody. So, you know, that's a great point too, Gene. Like, I mean, if you get a good one, then, like, I'd be like, shoot, I'm making easy money off of you. Let's run. You know, like, we're making great miles. We're like, hey, I'm making bank, and I'm not having to wake up. So, like, that'd be great. And, you know, that also, like, would kind of be like, hey, TNT trainers, pick up your pick up your skills. The better, faster you make them better, and the better you can make them, the more sleep you get, the more, the, the easier the money's going to be that you're making. There's no advantage. That's what you. That's what I was thinking. I'm doing a great solo. So don't know if I want to give my space. If it's not going to be worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. I really don't know if it's going to be worth it or not to tell you the truth. Like I like, I, I did, I did two, um, TNT trainings. So I trained two students on TNT and the first one, the first one I took on PSD all the way through and he was my first student ever. And, you know, we got, we got through it all, but I was like, man, it's kind of scary trying to trust somebody to drive. Like it's it is scary, but you know it's it was hard to sleep stuff like that. And then a while later, one of my students called me and he said my trainer rolled the truck. He fell asleep, rolled the truck, and I was like, "Dang, bro!" So I went and picked him up and I finished his TNT for him. He didn't ask me to, but I was like, "You know what? That sucks that that happened to him." So I was like, "You know what? I'm gonna go pick him up." So I went and picked him up and we finished that TNT and. You know, again, I was like, man, sleep sleeping on a sleeping on a moving truck sucks. I forgot. I'll tell you what, once you sleep on a moving truck, you're gonna find out that you you got fat where you didn't know you had fat. Like you're gonna be like, Man, the the I got fat in between my toes. I feel my toes jiggling. You feel everything jiggling when the truck's going down the road. <laughs> so hey, it is what it is. Uh, that's what I was thinking. I'm doing great solo. You know, oh, I already read that one. My bad. And Peglick says it takes a special personality to be a trainer. It really does. It takes that patience, and then like it, it, it takes a lot. It's not an easy gig. Like to anybody that thinks that this is easy, it's really not that easy. It is actually harder than you think.
think it is to be a trainer. I've seen a lot of people come out here and they're all like, man, I'm going to be a PSD instructor. I'm, that's what I'm going to do. I'm all like, okay, let's go, bro. Like, I'm proud of you. Like, go for it. Then they find out, man, standing out on that concrete for that long, I'm tired. Or they find out like, hey, man, it wasn't as good or as easy as I thought it was going to be. So they they don't make it. Some people will make it, but some people just, they're all like, whoa, I thought this was going to be way easier. Uh, Gene Scott says, the way we do it is 150 hours and I have to be in the seat beside them. I get $200 for him being on my truck. Plus I get paid for all the miles. No sleeping while the trainee is driving. So 150 hours. So plus I get paid. Well, that's not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, driving to you says i love your view videos me and my little girl kaylee are watching keep up the good work hey thank you i appreciate you and i just make some videos i just tr i just try it out i i wanted a channel i wanted a channel or actually i i accidentally fell into this really <laughs> started out with preacher videos and worked into this but like i just tried to get information out and i want the most accurate information i can put out i want to want this live uh, open forum to come out here and ask the tr trucking questions that people might need that's what i do so i i do appreciate everyone that tells me thank you for the videos or you love them like it inspires me and it pushes me to keep on going yeah i'm pretty sure uh pretty hard I've almost kicked me off the truck several times. <laughs> uh, Backwoods, I I kind of figured you were going to get kicked off the truck. She said, "She said you got to go. This is my truck now. Roadrunner 715, I was in Springfield earlier, picked up my 2021 Cascadia from Pedigree, going lease, lease it onto J.B. Hunt. Let's go, Roadrunner. So you bought a 2021. Did you buy my old truck? <laughs> oh, man. I just turned in my truck not too long ago, my green one. It'd be funny if you got my green one. Uh, green Freightliner Cascadia. I, it was green. It was green. What was my old truck number? Now, Now I don't even remember my old truck number. This one's six four. Man, I can't remember my old truck number. I probably got it wrote down somewhere in here. My old truck number. It was a green. It was a green Cascadia, and it was a twenty one because my old truck number is six one one five zero five. That was my old truck number. I couldn't even remember that. But yeah, that was my old truck numbers, and it was green. I just turned it in not too long ago. So, hey, you could be in you could be in my old truck. Never know. Uh, do I have a picture of my old truck? Let's see if I got a picture of my old truck. I mean, I'm sure it's not gonna have the stickers, but dang. I don't think I have one on this truck. I mean, on this computer. Looking at all my backgrounds. I don't see one on my backgrounds. I don't have a picture of it right now. But wouldn't that be something? You're on my channel. You're watching me and you're all like in my old truck. That would be pretty cool. Uh, I appreciate everything you've done for me in PSD. Now I'm on my own. If they ever build a Georgia terminal, I'm going to do PSD training. Hey, that's what's up. Let's go. Let's go. So. See. So. 
Are you company or lease? Well, if they build it, it doesn't matter because if they build a terminal down there, and yeah, it's going to take a while for it to be built, and and you need two years to do PSD. So by then, just boom, company and start doing PSD. Uh, Gene Scott says it usually takes about three to four weeks. It's okay. I was going to be driving those miles anyways. Oh, so you are training, Gene. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about, Gene. Uh, how many how many likes do you have for your videos here? How many likes do I have? Um, says I have ten likes. Man, I'm gonna get y'all. I'm gonna get y'all fixed up right now. Peg leg is gonna show y'all how to hit the. Hey everybody, hit that like button. Borrow my leg to smash that ding dong bell. Oh, and if you ain't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe too. Let's go, Peg Leg. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe too. Let's go, Gene Scott with the four ninety nine super chat. Keep up the great work, buddy. Let's go, Gene. I miss you, bro. Like we need to talk sometime. Catch up. Uh, Peg Leg says one thing I remember from for you is C O X D J O. It's my driver code. Hey, if anyone's filling out an application right now, and I caught you, and you hear me talking right now in that little box that says referral, that is C O X D J O. Thank you, thank you, Peg Leg, for the shameless plug right there. Let's go, Christopher Dean. Hey, Twisted, I love your videos, bro. Hope to join Prime soon. Hey, we just said the code, okay? Don't forget that either. <laughs> no, I appreciate you, man. I hope you do too. Like, let's go. Prime's a great company. Make sure you do your research and check out all the companies, but you're going to find out that one thing I will say about Prime that's really good is it's the highest paid training. And it's also the longest training. With that being said, you know, your pay is going to be higher at being trained here. Your training is going to take longer. It will take longer. But the good thing is, guess what? That's more time for you to experience trucking and getting more skills and learning more stuff. And that's more time that maybe the truck breaks down and you have to make a road assist call or whatever you know you're gonna find out a lot more because guess what you're on the truck board there's more opportunities for stuff to happen that you can experience your first whole year of trucking is experience anyways you want to get good experience uh phil paulson says what is a preliminary driving skill evaluation and orientation process uh are you coming in with a cdl phil is that is that the case if you're coming in with a cdl but no experience they're gonna make you take a evaluation inventory driving skills so yeah if you come here with a cdl if you come here with a cdl already then you're going to add just instead of a test because you already have a CDL, you're not going to take a CDL exam. They're going to do a evaluation and they're just going to make sure you can drive and make sure you can do some backing and that you know your pre-trip. That's it. Once you, once you can show them all that you'll be with the trainer. Once you can show them that you can do all that, then they're ready for you to go on TNT. And that's people that come in with little to no experience. If you come in with a CDL and you got a lot of experience, they're not going to do that with you. They're going to be like, hey, here's your truck. Go for it. Uh, Peg Leg says, I just remember we used to call Gene Scott Sparky. Yeah, Sparky. Poor guy. I forgot. Like, I did not forget about that. Lenny. What's happening, Big D? Getting ready to pass through Flagstaff, Arizona, head into the Southern California. Let's go, Lenny. I seen Lenny not too... When was that? 
It wasn't very too. It wasn't very long ago, but I did see him. Uh, Christopher Dean says, "Willing to face the experience and learn all I can." Good, good. Come in here. Um, come in here with the open ears. Open ears. Listen, listen. You will learn. You know, I've been, I've been saying, I've been having to say this a lot. And I will tell you what I have to say to a lot of people. Yesterday, oh, it was yesterday. Man, my days run like sometimes I tell somebody, I'm all like, bro, I just seen you yesterday. And they're all like, no, that was two weeks ago. So I always say like a few days ago because like I'm all like, how long ago was it? But yeah, it was, it was yesterday, wasn't it? But yeah, so no, nah, but back to what I was saying. Back to what I was saying is what I've been having to tell a lot of people is I have I have one job here, like my job, and this is what I'm having to tell my students here lately, because for some reason I've been getting a lot of students that think that they're they're the boss right now or that they're in charge or they don't have to listen. So what I I have to tell some of my students right now is there's two people in this truck right now. One of them is an instructor and one of them's in a student is a student. So we both we both have a job to do here. I am the instructor. So what I do is I instruct you on how to do this. Your job is to listen and follow directions. That's it. It's not for you to tell me what you're going to do. It's not for you to do whatever you want to do. It is for you to listen to the instructions I'm giving you and follow them. So there's there's not much of like I'm going to come in at I'm going to come in tomorrow at 7 a.m. or or hey um I want to go driving. We ain't, we're not going to do backing today. I'm, we're going to go driving. What? No, we're going to do whatever I want to do, bro. Like, it's my truck. Like, we're going to do whatever I need to do. So, and I'm just saying, like, I have to, I'm having to remind a lot of people right now that, hey, I'm the instructor and you are the student. I instruct you. You follow directions. You listen and follow directions. I'm instructing you what to do. Follow my directions. It shouldn't be harder than that. So just come in here with open ears and listen. That's the main thing I ask. Rex says, did Walmart by the campus kick us out? Thanks. Uh, Walmart by the campus has always been no overnight parking. The Walmart by the campus has always been, ever since I started, ever since I started, Walmart by the campus has been... Um, no overnight parking. And I don't even think that is prime to tell you the truth. I see a lot of Warner parking over there and like different companies parking over there. I don't, I really don't even think that prime's the problem, but they had an email or they had Walmart tell prime and different companies. Hey, this is, this Walmart's not for overnight parking. So you cannot overnight park here. So, hey, guess what? They sent out a message to everybody. Don't park overnight at Walmart. I, I don't even know why a prime truck would park over there overnight because we got the campus right next door. You can park in and we got the terminal. Like there's no reason to park at that Walmart. It's good. It's It's nice enough that they actually let us go in there and shop. But I'm telling you, that's probably going to end pretty soon shopping at that Walmart because truckers do it to themselves. I've been at that Walmart. I did a video whenever I, last time I shopped at that Walmart for my truck. And that was the Walmart that the pee bottle was rolling across the parking lot ground right by all the trucks. We do it to ourselves because guess what? Truckers are not taking the baskets back to the building and they're just emptying trash into the baskets or throwing it in the parking lot or whatever. So guess what? Now you can't go and shop at them. 
What's going on, Lisa King? How's it going? But we do it to ourselves, so you know we have no one to blame but ourselves whenever it comes to that because we're the ones leaving all the mess there. Uh, Francisco says, "Hello, sir. I have a question. Hopefully, you know the answer. If I get, if you get your permit in the in one state and you pass the CDL, can you change it to another state on the same day you pass? Thanks." Let me reread this. Like, I read too much into stuff, so let me reread this real quick. I have a question hopefully you can answer. If you get your permit in one state and you pass the CDL, can you change it to another state on the same day you pass? Thanks. Okay, so because the way this is worded is what's the, getting me. All right. So if you're saying, if you're saying like my permit is from Texas, I took my test in Missouri. So I got my test scores in in Missouri. Can I take them back to Texas and change it to a CDL? The answer is yes, you can. So all of our students test out. They take their their scores, go into a national database, and when you get back to Texas or wherever. They're already in the computer. So when you go to the DMV, they'll look it up, boom, it's done. And you have the heart, you have the copy also with you that you bring with you to Texas or where whatever state it is. Now, if you're asking, hey, if I get a permit from Texas, come to Missouri and test out, and then want to take those test scores to Indiana because I decided, hey, during PSD, I want to move to Indiana. That's not going to work because your permit was from Texas. Like you can't can't go through another state and um, switch it over like that. That's not going to work. Jordan says, "Listen to Twisted. He will get you right. Made my experience better for sure." Hey, I appreciate that, Jordan. Thank you so much. And and Jordan, you were a super super easy student. And like you really were, you listened a lot. Like you were very, very easy to teach. Peg leg says parking lots are not a potty or a so quiet treating. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, don't be throwing y'all's trash all over the place. Man, these truck stops are getting nasty. Walmart's are getting nasty. We're ruining stuff for ourselves. So. Please don't be ruining this stuff for everybody. Uh, what was that? Parking lots. Gene, I thought you, Hey, Gene's trying to fall asleep. He's just too interested in the live because I haven't been doing them as much. That in here playing with a flashlight. <laughs> Don't play with flashlight. You got shocked last time. Francisco says, so once you get your CDL, you have to go back to your home state and then change it to a different. Once you Francisco, 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 Francisco. Are you getting your CD by chance? Are you getting your permit in your home state? And then you're gonna come to Prime. Because we can we can answer all this even easier. <laughs> because if you're if you're getting your CDL, if you're getting your permit and you're coming to Prime, we can make this super easy, bro. Just answer that one question and I'll let you know. Please answer that question. You have to go back to But yeah, if if you're if you're gonna move, if you're gonna change states, if you're gonna change states, then the answer is yes. You're gonna have to go back. To, you're in California, okay? So yes, if you got a permit from California, you went took your test at Prime, came back, you have to switch it over to a California CDL, and then you can go wherever you're planning on going, and then switch it to that state so there you go that made it a lot easier like i would that's way easier so 
Thank you for getting that a little bit better. Uh, Roberto Lopez says, is the way for trucks at Utah facility long right now? Working on my on my permit at Las Vegas. Is the way for trucks. No, I haven't heard no problems in wait for trucks. I haven't heard anybody talking about waiting for trucks being a long time. Dude. Okay, yeah, you'll take your test. You'll take your test scores back to California for sure. You might be waiting on late. Yeah, uh, for some reason, it seems like a lot of the company drivers have to go to Salt Lake City to get a truck. And if you're lease, you definitely want to come to Springfield. I don't know why that is, but that seems to be the case. I know you can get a lease truck over there, and I know you can get a lease truck in Pittston. But what I've been noticing is it's a lot better chance to get in one in Springfield for lease. Nothing Francisco says, thank you. You are the best. I've been following you forever. Hey, brother, man, I appreciate it. It's just like the question, the wording of the question kind of throws me off sometimes. Because I really read into it. Like, I, I really do. I read into everything and I... So funny thing is I'm always telling my students not to overthink, but I am definitely one of those overthinkers. I do overthink sometimes, a lot of times. So I'll read too much into something. Uh, do you know when the chain laws quit in? Nah, peg leg. I don't, I don't pay attention to that. I pay attention to if it's in effect or not, but that's only whenever I'm going through those states. Phil, tell them twisted, right? Uh, Lopez says, I'm planning to be a company driver for now till I feel I'm ready. You know, and th that's the best way to do it. I, I say at least six months, go company at least six months. That way you're making all the mistakes on the company dime. You know, if you make any mistakes, it's not going to cost your business any. It's going to be kind of on the company side. So I, I really, really believe in that. You know, I rather. Oh, my bad. There was a pop up on the screen, but, you know, I really believe in going company first till you learn the, the actual business of trucking. Once you learn the business of trucking, how all of it works, and you know, you're know you really comfortable with the paperwork and you're confident, then come on back. Come on back to, to do that lease program. You know, and, you know, that's my, that's my suggestion. That, that way you're comfortable with the actual truck, trucking. You're comfortable with that. And you just really got to worry about your, your business fund. Like, what you have to do to run your account, what you have to do for all that. Let's see, where's my brightness at? There. Wanted to turn my brightness up on my computer a little bit. I could not see way better it's probably all reflecting off my glasses now though big time huh that's why i have it down so low uh march 31st peg leg i was talking about the guy from california least to change yeah i know what you meant uh good move i plan to do that too yeah dude i think it's i believe it's pretty it's really the smartest way to do things. Um, Backwoods, Backwoods even did something that was great. If y'all watch his channel, he'll probably tell you on his channel. But I think the way he did it too, like kind of test driving a truck first, I think that that was a great idea, real good idea. Get to know the truck and then lease the truck. Like I think that that was awesome. How many divisions the how many divisions does Prime have? Oh man, it's been getting crazy. So we have that grain now. We have intermodal. We have tanker. We have reefer. 
we have flatbed. So five divisions now. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I think that that's it. I'm pretty sure that that's it. Uh, Jordan says, definitely go company at first. I haven't made any big mistakes, but I definitely see where some mistakes could have happened. Yeah. The brightness depends on how much you wax your head. Thanks, Pegleg. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go, Pegleg. Hey, just so y'all know, if y'all... um. If y'all watch a bunch of TikTok, Mr. Pegleg right here, Mr. Pegleg has his very own his very own TikTok channel. He's I think he's at like a thousand four hundred followers or something like that, and he's out there doing a lot of jokes and stuff like that. And everybody on TikTok loves him, and they're he's actually doing pretty good on there. They're uh seen him battle i seen him battle he he won his battle the other day i mean it, it's been fun like peg legs doing his thing so y'all are missing out if y'all are not following peg leg on tiktok y'all can just block me <laughs> block my tiktok not my youtube <laughs> oh man <laughs> Gene Scott says, take it from me, go company, go company, go company, go company. Please, it'll make for a, a better experience. You will make just as much money and you won't be stressing about all the expenses. You can just enjoy trucking. Yeah, I, hey, I kind of agree. Start, start company for sure. Ernest says, I want to learn how to drive a truck. Ernest, come on out here, bro. Like, we've put you in a truck. <laughs> Make sure you do research on companies before you just sign up for one. But, hey, it's it's not really. You want to know the hardest part to getting your CDL at Prime. This is going to be the hardest part of getting your CDL at Prime. Getting on that Greyhound to come here. Leaving everything you knew at the house and everything everything that you've been working on your entire life. Jumping on a Greyhound and risking it all on coming out here to get a CDL. That is the scariest part and the hardest part is that ride up to, up to Springfield. Leaving all that. Other than that, the rest of it is not too bad. I mean, next probably hardest thing would be pre-trip and truck. I'm at the point with pre-trip right now. Like, I am sick of pre-trip. I'm not even going to lie. I'm sick of pre-trip. I'm sick of talking about pre-trip. Ever since we went to this new testing way, pre-trip has been, like, the hardest thing that I'm doing, man. Like, people just do not want to study it. They take it for granted. It's two pages front and back now. It used to be five pages front and back. And, like, it's driving me nuts. Like, I'm... Like, it's people are wasting a lot of time on pre-trip because they just won't get out there and do it. Like, I, I don't know. Ever since COVID happened, it's like the the whole world just said, you know what? We're too lazy to stand out there and study pre-trip. We're going to go lay in our bed and study. It's like something about COVID just made the whole world lazier or something. Because it was good. And then COVID happened and just like all of a sudden, everybody's just like, Oh, I don't want to work. I don't want to work. Is it because we had too much time off during COVID and everybody was at the house? Because this guy was still working during it. But like, what is it? Like, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? Why why is pre-trip so hard now that people just won't get out there and study it? I just I just can't I don't understand it. Buddy, you are the best. Hey, Pegleg, you are the best, sir. You're you're an amazing dude, man. You're you're one of my best friends, Pegleg. I'm telling you. Uh, Jordan Tibbetts says, "I agree with Gene. Definitely less stress home, and I've been home once since November. God, it's not good." Uh, Ernest says, "I be in Ghana. I love trucking." 
Uh, Peg Lug says, take it from me. Fly, don't take the Greyhound. <laughs> Greyhounds suck. Uh, Lopez says, I got a pre-trip study guide on my hand. It's the five-page one. Oh, so you must be... You must be in Salt Lake City. Or actually, actually, my pre-trip, my, my old pre-trip fit on five pages front and back, and my new pre-trip is two pages front and back. The If you got the prime copy, it's all spaced out too much, and it's all spread out, so it's even, it's even more pages. Look at all the stories you got from Greyhound Pegleg. Oh yeah, Pegleg had an awesome time on Greyhound. <laughs> uh, Dodge Lift. Sp Springfield will be your home. It's a wonderful ton of everything, hobby stores and etc. Right? Yeah, Some zombies walking around, all kinds of stuff in Springfield. <laughs> I don't even live in Springfield. I don't want to live in Springfield. Well, hey guys, I'm I'm out of here. It was fun. Like I had a great time. Like I miss doing these lives. Honestly, I miss them. But um, like, comment, subscribe. You know all that good stuff. Until we, uh, until probably next Thursday, I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna be able to start getting back on the track of doing this every Thursday. So good night, everybody. Thanks, thanks for everybody stopping in here, and make sure you follow Pegleg on TikTok. P E G. L-E-G.